Tensions between Russia and Ukraine have decreased this week. More on that, central banks, and its impact on the markets in this video. Roll the intro. Hello and welcome to the World Series of Trading, the only place where you can make real money trading virtual funds. My name is Ron and I'm a pro trader on the platform. I've been trading for over seven years and I'm here to bring you expert market analysis. But before we get into it, I need to remind you that none of these videos constitute as financial advice or advice of any kind to take any position in any financial instrument. But without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to this market analysis for the 14th of March, 2022. Now, over the past few weeks, we've been watching one story and one story only, and that's what's going on with Russia and Ukraine. But I've got good news for you this week. We're watching something other than Russia and Ukraine, right? And that other something is central banks. So with the central banks, you've got a whole bunch of central banks coming out with interest rate decisions, namely the Federal Reserve, which is expected to increase interest rates by 25 basis points, right? This is their first rate increase. And then you've also got the Bank of England, which has already raised rates twice this year and is expected to make a third consecutive rate hike, which brings the UK interest rate to 0.75%, um, right? The other one you've got is the Bank of Japan. Not much action expected from the Bank of Japan. However, the yen is at its weakest level since 2017. So you definitely want to be watching that one. Then the other one is the Central Bank of Russia. Now with this entire war situation, you definitely want to be watching them. Um, they say they've only got $600 million worth of reserves left to protect the currency. However, 300 million of it is essentially locked up in offshore banks, which they can't access, right? Then you've also got the Central Bank of Turkey. No one's really watching the lira right now because of what's going on in other emerging markets. So those are central banks. But before we even get into um, the details of central banks and what impacts that's going to have in the markets, we need to talk about the Russian-Ukraine situation. So with the Russian-Ukraine situation, what happened on Friday was we got a report that President Putin said that there were certain positive shifts that had occurred um, with their talks with Ukraine, right? And on Friday, we weren't exactly sure whether or not we should believe this um, and whether this actually, or if um, President Putin had planted the story to, you know, essentially control the media narrative, right? But over the weekend, we then got Ukraine confirming that Russia had actually been more forthcoming within talks and there was potential for some kind of peacemaking deal that could that we could hear of this coming week right and that's obviously had a positive impact in, in equity markets with um, all the main indices rising and you know oil coming down and all of that that comes with it but now that i've gotten into what's going on in the markets let's actually have a look at what that looks like visually okay so i am going to open my trading platform and uh, there we go all right so hopefully now you can see my screen and we're going to start this one off with the s p 500 to sort of get a sense of where exactly we are with equity markets right so s p 500 it's obviously been trading within this range um between 4400 and 4135 right so this is definitely the the low point whereby i think it would be a good buy however this is on the condition that we don't get any negative news coming out of this whole war situation right so um, S&P 500, we're trading in this sideways range with where we're at right now. I expect the market to cut, either come down to this level as a result of central bank increases in interest rates, particularly the Federal Reserve. So Wednesday, I would expect this market to be a lot lower. However, 
if we do get positive news flow out of the whole Russia Ukraine situation um, with the talks, then you can expect the S and P 500 to test this level and maybe go even higher to 4400, right? So S and P 500, that's the story for you. Euro dollar, Euro dollar, you've gotten some strength in the dollar because of the fact that we've been expecting the federal reserve to increase interest rates the entire discussion was actually whether it increases interest rates by 25 basis points or 50 basis points but jerome powell came out last week and indicated that it's likely going to be a 25 basis point increase okay so with the euro dollar i do expect to stay within this range however if the euro weakens and we reach this level 110.65 i'd definitely be looking for a short right over there presents a really good risk reward ratio and you're trading with your back against the wall um so that could open up for a move all the way down here particularly once we actually get the announcement of the interest rate increase right um However, in the alternative scenario, if it's uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact, you definitely want to be buying euro dollar off this level if we do reach that level, right? However, I don't see euro dollar going significantly lower than this because, you know, there isn't really any, any kind of major shift within central banks um, that we, we've gotten unless if we get some surprise from the Federal Reserve saying that they want to be more aggressive in terms of interest rate increases and they start talking about us maybe getting more than seven, six or seven interest rate increases, you know. At that point, you definitely want to be looking to this level as, uh, you know, the level to short off a retracement, okay? Next one we're looking at is the pound. Now the Bank of England is expected to increase interest rates again, right? That's what the market anticipates. Therefore, I think the pound actually provides a very good risk reward ratio trade to the upside from here. And we could be looking to get up to the, these levels over here, um, 31.85, 131.85 and potentially even one, up to 133. So that's what I'm looking at on the pound looking to go long around about these levels but obviously you go to a shorter time frame and if the setup presents itself best believe i am going to capitalize on that now with the us dollar against the yen we've got it at a high that we haven't seen since 2017 okay so obviously we were trading in the the sideways range last week and i did point out that um, this was a good level to buy, that's a good level to sell. However, um, because the yen's lost somewhat of its um, safe haven capabilities, given the fact that they are a net oil importer and they actually import most of the oil from Russia, that then presents, well, that makes them less attractive from a balance of payments point of view, right? So that's what i'm pinning this rapid increase in um in the price of dollar yen too so we are now sitting at the highs which obviously means it doesn't exactly present the most attractive risk reward ratio however you get a retracement of this move um it will present a very good opportunity to get long okay so dollar yen if we do get some kind of a retracement i will be looking for that to that retracement to buy however i do not want to be going against a moving train right and uh, short positions are completely off the cards at this stage right then we've got wti wti as i pointed out last week um it did present a really really good risk reward ratio trade for if you were looking to get short and um, that's what we've got because we had very limited upside given the fact that we had gapped up and there was essentially a liquidity vacuum that existed over here, right? So we went on to slightly break that high and I think the path of least resistance, unless if we get 
um, news that uh, talks talks between Russia and Ukraine couldn't um, well they couldn't reach some kind of peacemaking deal. Um, we could see another rise in the price of oil. However, right now, the highest probability trade is a short position in oil. Right, so um, I'd definitely be shorting shorting oil over here, particularly with this small bounce that we got over here this was a really good one to take um but yeah as in 100 dollars, i think would be the floor for this temporary floor however so i'd be looking to get long roundabout here and potentially for a move up however i think path of least resistance is to the downside so if you get long it would be a short-term trade Medium term, I think oil is coming down and, um, you know, less pressure on um, on in, on inflation and things like that, which is positive for the global economy overall. And um, that's the that's what we're all hoping to see, because I'm sure um, for those of us traveling up and down, we've definitely seen the price increase within oil at the pump. You know, um, here in South Africa, the price of uh, fuel has actually gone up to 20 rand and 80 cents. Um, and I remember there were huge pro protests last year about um, the price of fuel getting above 20 rand. So um, that's something that you're seeing globally. And um, in the US, I think it's above six dollars a gallon or something like that. So um, it's really good from a global economic perspective to see the price of oil decrease like this right then the other thing we're watching is gold gold is getting less of a safe haven bid and that's because of the fact that geopolitical tensions are decreasing right so because geopolitical tensions are decreasing you can expect gold to come off after this now the level i'm watching as support is where we're at right now now, if gold breaks through this level, I think it can go a hell of a lot lower. So we're expecting gold to, so I'm expecting gold to um, break through this level and go even lower, right? So right here, I think it presents a very good opportunity to get short on gold. Right, now Bitcoin, Bitcoin, I don't know if you saw the, if you saw Elon Musk's tweet last night, which somewhat showed um, the decrease in influence that he's had, that he's got in crypto, as opposed to those days when he'd tweet and, you know, Dogecoin would jump up uh, 20, 30% overnight, right? Um, this time he tweeted that he's, he's going to continue holding his Bitcoin, his, e his Ethereum and his Dogecoin, right? Um, given the current environment whereby, well, given the inflationary environment, right? So that sent Bitcoin, that made Bitcoin spike, but then, you know, it was very short lived. And as I said before, he's having less of an influence on the crypto market, thank goodness. Um, so with Bitcoin, this is the situation. We're in a sideways range with Bitcoin, right? With Bitcoin, you've got 45,000 being the top of the range and you've got 35,000 being the bottom of the range. Right. And um, these areas right over here present a very good opportunity to buy, I think. And these areas over here present a good opportunity to sell unless if you get a major shift within the markets, fundamental catalyst that drives the price higher or lower than those ranges. Right. So that's the story on Bitcoin right now. In the short term, what are we trading? I'm looking to trade this particular range over here between 30, 37,700 and 42,000, right? And, um, you know, right here presents a very good opportunity to get long and maybe ride it all the way up to 42,000. So that's what I'm looking at, particularly if you're in the um, crypto all the time tournament with me. Um, that's exactly what I'm looking to do over the next few days. And, um, let's hope I can win another one. <laughs> so that's the situation with crypto. And I am particularly interested in this instrument right now with the tournament going on. So the crypto all the time tournament is running from 
today until the 25th of March. And I'm looking to play this one to the upside. If we get over here, we'll see how the story develops. But I don't see any major fundamental catalysts that drive crypto much higher than 42,000. Um, and that's obviously because crypto is, is closely tied to the equity markets right now. Right now, crypto is trading as a risk asset. So as a risk asset, crypto um, is highly dependent on what goes on with the Russia, Russia war situation, okay? So if we get Russia deciding, to, deciding on a ceasefire with Ukraine and living up to that, then you will see crypto rise rise higher maybe even break the 42k level but 45k i think is a bit of a stretch so that's what i'm looking at in crypto and another thing please monitor the central bank action very closely because central bank action will lead to a significant movement within the equity markets now if you like this video please smash the like button below and subscribe to our youtube channel for more content just like it and if you'd like to join in on the fun we have a trading competition running right now by the way the prize pool for 2022 is well over a million dollars so you do not want to miss out on the action first link in the description if you want to join in on one of the trading competitions but other than that i'll see you in the next one